It's like a white desert. Endless stretches of ice and snow. The wind howls and slaps you mercilessly in the face. The air is so cold that your breath freezes before it leaves your lips. Survival in such an environment seems almost impossible. But there is a people who have lived here for thousands of years, the Inuit. The Inuit do not need modern buildings, steel constructions, or concrete structures to survive. They build houses with the only materials nature has to offer. But these houses are not like the houses you know. An igloo is a structure made entirely of snow and ice. But here is a surprising fact. How can the inside of an igloo stay warm and sleep comfortably when it is freezing cold outside? When you think about how a house made of snow and ice can be warm inside, it may seem to defy the laws of physics. After all, ice and snow are cold, right? But thanks to the ingenuity of the Inuit, igloos are self-sustaining structures. Today we will learn how igloos maintain their internal temperature, how the Inuit discovered this knowledge, and how they use one of the most effective insulation systems nature has to offer. These structures, which look like ordinary snowdrifts, are actually full of details that astonish even modern science. Humans often use thick walls, reinforced concrete systems, and high-tech insulation materials to ensure a structure stays warm. But long before modern construction techniques, the Inuit developed a perfect insulation system with the simplest material nature had to offer, snow. There were no engineering calculations or laboratory tests. They simply observed and experienced nature and passed on what they learned from generation to generation. But can snow really work as an insulation material? As counterintuitive as it may sound, the answer is yes. But what matters here is the type of snow and how it is used. The Inuit don't use a random pile of snow to build an igloo. Freshly fallen soft snow is not resistant to pressure and has a high and uneven air content. Instead, they use snow that has been compressed by the wind, condensed to a certain hardness. This special type of snow provides exceptional insulation thanks to its air pockets. There are millions of microscopic air pockets inside the snow, which prevent warm air from escaping. It works just like a thermos. It's the same principle as the insulation panels used in modern buildings. Air is the best insulator. The more air pockets there are, the more heat is retained inside. But the material alone is not enough. The design of the igloo also plays a critical role in maintaining temperature balance. From the outside, the igloo may look like a simple snowdrift with a hemispherical door and chimney, but the dome shape is no coincidence. This structure is one of the most durable forms in nature. When you look at the sky, you can see that interstellar gas clouds are also spherical. This is the most efficient way to create a strong, stable, and durable structure in nature. When building an igloo, the snow blocks are not stacked randomly on top of each other. The Inuit carefully place the blocks using a spiral pattern. This system not only ensures that the structure stands firm, but also distributes the load evenly, making it resistant to storms and strong winds. An igloo is designed to retain warmth not only on the outside, but also on the inside. One of the most important details is that the floor is made up of different levels. When you enter, you notice that the door entrance is at the bottom. The reason for this is simple but clever. Cold air is heavy and accumulates at the lowest point. The cold air that comes in stays in the entrance tunnel and cannot reach the Iglon's main living space. This technique is known as the cold air trap. The living area is slightly above this level. The places where people sit and sleep are higher than the entrance because the warm air rises upwards. This way, the heat is trapped inside and people stay in the warmest area. The inside temperature of the igloo can stay between 10 and 15 degrees Celsius, even in freezing temperatures of minus 40 degrees Celsius or minus 50 degrees Celsius. Moreover, when there are several people indoors, their body heat adds extra warmth to the environment and the temperature inside increases even more. The warm air accumulated in a small space is not lost thanks to the natural insulation of the iglon, creating a comfortable living space inside. Thanks to the insulating power of snow and architectural design, igloos trap the warmth inside. However, it is just as vital to generate warmth as it is to maintain it. Because without a heat source inside, no matter how well insulated, the cold will eventually take over. 
The Inuit were able to heat the inside of their igloos using the simplest but most effective methods nature has to offer. So how did they provide heating inside? The most basic heat source used by the Inuit is a traditional oil lamp called a kolik. The kolik is a simple but incredibly effective tool. It is fed with whale blubber, seal blubber, or sometimes other marine mammal blubber, and slowly burns through a wick. As it burns, it creates both a gentle flame and a constant warmth. It does not generate excessive heat, like a modern stove, but ensures that the temperature inside is stably maintained. The biggest advantage of the kolik is that it burns for a long time and uses its fuel efficiently. Even a small amount of oil can burn for hours, creating a constant heat source. In addition, it also serves as lighting. For the Inuit, who had to live in total darkness on polar nights, the kolik was not only a source of heat, but also a source of light that made life easier. But it is not only kolik that heats igloos. The human body is also an important source of heat. When there are several people in a small space, each of them radiates their own body heat into the environment, causing an increase in temperature. Another factor that stabilizes the temperature inside the igloo is the positioning of the living spaces. Inuit build their sleeping quarters in the highest part of the igloo. This is because warm air rises and the areas near the ceiling of the igloo are the warmest. The entrance is located at the lowest level. Because the cold air is heavy, it stays at the bottom of the tunnel and does not spread inside. This creates a natural temperature balance inside the igloo. But here a big problem arises. If the air inside is not refreshed, oxygen is depleted and moisture can build up, causing the igloo to deteriorate. That's why the Inuit have developed a different system that not only keeps the igloo warm, but also circulates the air inside. The warm air that accumulates indoors carries moisture with it. When a person breathes and the colic burns, water vapor is constantly released into the air. If this moisture does not find an outlet, over time it condenses on the interior surface of the igloo, weakening the walls and even causing deterioration. To prevent this from happening, the Inuit drill a small ventilation hole at the top of the igloo. This vent is called a chingak. The chingak allows the hot air inside to escape in a controlled way. This removes excess moisture and allows fresh air to circulate inside. However, Inuit do not open this hole at random. An excessively large vent can cause the heat inside to escape. Therefore, the chingak is usually small and controlled. Another important detail is the small air gaps left by the Inuit in the interior walls of the igloo. These gaps allow the air inside to circulate in a controlled way. If the air inside becomes heavy and the oxygen level drops, the Inuit expand these air holes to equalize the pressure inside. Ventilation is not only provided by the chingak. The igloo entrance tunnel is also an important part of ventilation. Cold air stays down and warm air rises up. This natural air movement ensures a constant flow of fresh air inside the igloo. The air circulation inside works so effectively that scientists have compared the rate of internal air exchange in igloos with modern buildings and found similar results. Even in the harshest conditions of nature, igloos have a natural ventilation system that can provide a constant circulation of fresh air without human intervention. Thus, thousands of years ago, the Inuit were able not only to stay warm, but also to live healthily by breathing fresh air. Even modern science today draws inspiration from the Inuit by studying the insulation and ventilation system of igloos. Although igloos were a place of shelter and living for the Inuit, they were not only that, igloos were also the center of social and cultural life for the Inuit. On the surface, an igloo may appear to be just a shelter, but a closer look reveals them to be engineering marvels that embody sustainable design principles that even modern science is still searching for solutions to. For thousands of years, the Inuit people have survived by building homes without harming nature, with a zero carbon footprint and using fully recyclable materials. Even today, engineers working on energy efficiency are researching the next generation of buildings by studying the natural insulation and ventilation provided by igloos. Scientists have confirmed through research that igloos have a unique design in terms of thermal insulation durability, and indoor air circulation. Thermal camera tests showed that the snow on the inner surface of the igloo turns into a thin layer of ice as it comes into contact with warm air. 
further strengthening the structure. This system is very similar to modern passive house concepts. Passive houses are buildings that can maintain their own heat balance with very little external energy, and scientists say this feature of igloos is revolutionary in terms of sustainable architecture. Another interesting similarity is that modern insulation materials exactly match the working principle of igloos. Today's double-glazed windows, air-filled insulation panels, and thermoactive wall systems are actually technological versions of the natural insulation mechanism of igloos. The air pockets inside the snow blocks work just like modern insulation materials to trap heat. But the durability of igloos has also attracted the attention of the scientific community. Research on global air currents and wind dynamics has shown that the igloo design has an excellent aerodynamic structure that minimizes wind resistance. This means that even the strongest storms can flow across the surface of the igloo without difficulty and cannot destroy it. Modern architects such as Buckminster Fuller, famous for his geodesic dome design, have been inspired by the igloo's geometric form to develop more durable and efficient building designs. In fact, NASA's future habitats on Mars and the Moon are designed to be dome-shaped, just like an igloo. But science is not only interested in the technical aspects of igloos. These structures are also an integral part of Inuit culture. An igloo is not just a shelter, but a living space where the community comes together, where generations pass on knowledge, and where cultural heritage is preserved. Historically, Inuit have used igloos as a place to teach hunting and survival skills. Inside an igloo, ancestral knowledge was passed down, tales were told, and oral history, one of the most important elements of Inuit culture, was passed down from generation to generation. The igloo was not only a home, but a school, a storytelling center, and a community space. For the Inuit, the igloo is also a symbol of living in harmony with nature. In modern cities, people go to great lengths to change nature and make it suit them. However, Inuit are one of the few communities that accept nature as it is and live their lives in harmony with it. Even today, some Inuit communities still teach traditional igloo building techniques to younger generations. This knowledge is of great importance for the preservation of cultural heritage despite the changes brought about by modern life. In conclusion, igloos are not just snow structures, but a testament to human ingenuity, adaptability to nature, and sustainable living over thousands of years. The Inuit have survived by making the most of what nature has to offer without using any modern construction materials. Today, scientists and architects are exploring ways to increase energy efficiency in the modern world inspired by the igloos that were the result of these ancient geniuses. While igloos may seem like a piece of the past, they remain an excellent model for sustainable living spaces of the future. And so we have learned how to stay warm inside a structure made of ice and what an engineering marvel these structures are. But this is just the beginning. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. For more of this kind of content, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you can be notified of new videos as soon as they're posted. We'll continue to explore the incredible survival methods nature has to offer, like the igloo. See you in the next video.